So in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about how a computer memory, not the hard disk, the RAM memory, so the memory that is used by the processors work and how you might use it in a more optimized way. Why should it be interesting? First of all, you might find yourself in the necessity to write a small or a big computer program to do some kind of calculations, usually using C or Fortran. You could also do it with Python or more high-level languages, but things would be a bit different in that case. And in these cases, or if you want already have a program and you want to optimize it, you always will need to know a little bit about how the memory works and so in order to understand what's the best approach. For example, even if you simply have to go through a matrix, there is a right and there is a wrong way. The wrong way will simply be uh, at least one order, no, even an order of magnitude slower than the right one. Of course, I won't go too much into technical details because I don't know them either. I'm not an electronic engineer. I will simply give a very practical approach on how things work in order to do a better optimization or a better program and in general to have a faster going uh, calculation. Of course, these knowledges are true both for normal computers and for HPC clusters. In HPC clusters, simply these things I'm going to say will be repeated hundreds or thousands or millions of times for each RAM that you have. So, as said, uh, when a processor will, have to, will need some kind of information, for example, if you have the calculation A plus B equals C, the processor will need to know what value A is, what value B is, and will need to know where to put the value C. All this will be somewhere inside the memory of the computer. So for example, here you might have A, here B, and here's C. So he will take this information, this one, and will put this information here and these are separated units inside the memory inside the RAM and why don't we directly go in the hard disk without having to use a RAM we might simply only uh, update the hard disk and take information from the hard disk that modern hard disks are quite uh, cheap and can be terabytes big while RAMs usually are only some gigabytes and are quite more expensive um, it's easy because a hard disk, yes, it has a huge um, storage ability, but the problem it's, uh, is that it's very, very, very slow. Taking some kind of information from the hard disk is a very slow process, and writing on the hard disk is a very slow process. While taking information from the RAM and putting it on the RAM is much, much quicker. I will give you more in details about this later on. At first, let's consider the fact that we could consider the RAM as a linear vector that goes on forever or as a matrix. It's not really important. Big exactly as um, the capacity of your RAM. So you will usually uh, start in a certain position and then go on and on and on. Uh, simply go, uh, for example, this could be like I'm reading an array. So I have a vector with some kind of information. So I have put this information in some units inside the memory and I simply jump from one another and read them one and one. So for example, if I want to print it, I will have to read Okay, what's in the first position, second position, third, fourth, etc. And yes, if you have a vector in C or Fortran, the computer will put the whole vector in an adjacent way. So the, the information will be one behind the other and one near the other. You will never have something sparse where you will have to jump up and down and up again. It will always be linear. That's not true for lists, so for linked lists, for example. They can be diffused everywhere. And that's actually the reason, the fact that 
the arrays are adjacent parts of the memory is the reason why you uh, cannot simply add a dimension, a multi another piece to a vector or make a vector shorter during at runtime. You will always have to create it with a certain length and keep it. You can simply start using only less and less, but you cannot change it. That's because it really takes a piece of memory that is exactly long enough and it is all one near the other. So it's not sparse. While with uh, more complex uh, structures that are also slower, like linked lists, you can always add and remove parts, change order and do whatever you like. So as I said, usually you will simply access the memory in one position and go on in the right order. Simply from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But actually, what happens, and that's why you want to have adjacent memory when you have to do some intensive task, is that you, what a processor makes isn't, even, uh, isn't to take the information directly from the RAM. There are actually a different layers that are faster but smaller. So you will have the memory, the RAM, and then you will have a certain amount of levels of cache. These caches, are the number of them and the length of them, depend on the machine you're working on. There are some standards, but they don't need to be always respected. So, depending on the machine you're working on, you can have multiple levels of cache and multiple length. And each, each cache will always be with a technology that is faster to write and read from, but uh, as it is faster, it is usually much more expensive, so it will have less memory than the level beneath it. So, what does the computer do to use uh, to have a most efficient as possible um, way of taking things from memory and putting it inside memory. Uh, of course, you have then your hard uh, your hard disk that will be huge but very slow. In the beginning of the program, uh, you will simply take the first part of interest that may be your first information from the hard disk, but you won't take only that. The RAM will copy all a chunk of the hard disk of anything that is near to your information, to what you're interested in. It will copy everything, because if you copy only one thing or you fill the RAM with everything, it will take the same amount of time. And so simply, as this is a very slow process, it will take everything. Then, of course, this same information will be put to the first level of cache that will again take everything that is near to it and big enough to fit the cache and so on. And in the end you will have your, your processor that will take only the information needed. But why do you have this kind of structure? It's easy, because if you are going into near parts of the memory, you will already have the next step that you need in the very fast cache, and this will be very fast. So we, we will have very fast uh, iteration from one step to another. Then of course we will have here a cache miss, because of this part, the next part isn't on this cache, but we will find it here. So we'll copy all this part in the, this other cache, the old things will be removed, all this will be copied, and so, and so you will have again three or four, a certain number of very fast interactions. Then of course you will have another miss, but you will have another miss again because you already took everything from here, and you will take it on the RAM that is again fast enough to deal with it. Of course, each time you have a miss, the um, putting information up will be slower. So what you try to do is to have as little misses, cache misses as possible. And of course, all this goes till you have 
a mess on the RAM and at this point you will have to do this lower process of taking things from the hard disk. But of course that's the thing that you try to uh, do as little as possible. So usually maybe for small programs you might already have everything put on the RAM and only have uh, informations go up and down the cache. For very big pro programs uh, you might need to swap something on the hard disk and really work up and down from the hard disk. Uh, yeah, of course the program will be slower, but it means you have such a big data set that you can't do otherwise. So, as we said, we are going to try to reduce to the minimum the amount of cache misses. Thus we will always try to read from the fastest memory possible. So if we have in our RAM Three, four, five, six, seven. If we have in our RAM this vector, and then we have a cache that is able to keep one, two, three, and a faster one that is able to keep only one and two, and then we have our CPU that will do something. Now, if we want to simply do, I don't know go through a vector and show it on the screen. Uh, the fast way is to go from one to the other, so from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven. Why is it the faster? Because simply, the, very simple, um, when you take up the vector, the caches will already be filled automatically in this way, and then the CPU will take one, and then two, that's very fast. When you arrive to this point, this cache will probably be updated, because usually this is longer, with another piece of this one. So for example, yeah, this could make more sense, because once we need three, we will probably up, um, update this uh, cache here with three and four. We already actually used the three, but then we will have a very fast interaction with four. Then we will have fill, used all this cache, and at this point we will have a double miss. So we won't find it here, and you won't find it here. What you're looking for, you will find it in the RAM. And so actually all what is remaining will be copied here and here as much as possible in order to have an as fast as possible interaction. So as little as possible misses. What happens if you do it in the wrong order, so you don't do, do it from 1 to 7 or from 7 to 1, but you want to jump 1 to 5, 5 to 2, 2 to 7. In this case you will always have a miss, so you will always have to fetch information from the RAM directly. And this will mean having a much much slower iteration through the vector. For big uh, vectors, it could be an order of magnitude of difference in the speed. So now you're saying, okay, um, I know I don't have to jump through vectors if it's not strictly necessary. But, so, um, okay, it's not difficult. Why is it so important to know this? It's important because of matrices. How is a matrix saved inside memory? Because, no, it's not saved in two dimensions as you might imagine uh, or as you're used to see them even though the syntax allows you to use two or three or four or six dimensions to make a matrix or in general an array in the memory a matrix will be simply saved linearly you could also consider a memory of a computer as linear so if I have if I have this matrix one two three four five six, how will it be saved? So how could I reduce to the minimum the cache misses? So should I read it through lines? So first line, second line, or columns? First column, second column. So in each algorithm I have to do, will I have to try to go more through lines or more through columns? It depends, because C, 
saves a magic through columns, uh, through lines, sorry, lines. So, uh, actually, what you will have in C is in reality a vector that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's what you will find inside the memory if you're using a C program. In fact, with C, where you have pointers and you're free, freer to go through uh, the memory than in Fortran, you can actually uh, go through a matrix as it was uh, a vector. You don't have, even have to use the 2D uh, notation if you don't want to. You can use a, simply a 1D dimension. So uh, zero, in C, you start with 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3. So if you call this V, V3, so this position, is, uh, gives you 4, even though it was a matrix in the beginning. But you could also say, of course, um, 1, 2, V1, 2. They're both the same thing. That's how it's saved. Uh, but in the other side, in Fortran, you have it by columns. So that's something to remember. You have it by columns. So this will be saved as 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. Uh, usually many, many, many programming languages are more similar to C. Fortran is quite... Uh, yeah, it's quite uh, a thing on its own, and it's probably because it uh, it is older than C, and it has been done exactly for scientific and mathematical calculations. So it's been done in the way as a mathematician would think about a vector. Uh, they, you usually mathematics consider a vector as a column and not as a line. Uh, while C has been created to uh, write the Unix operative system, or maybe a more older version of it, and so uh, there was no reason to do it like a mathematician would do it, but you s you're simply interested in going through the memory. You consider memory linear, so you go through lines. Uh, of course, it's equivalent, but you must remember it. If you go in the wrong order, you will go incredibly slower, even for a very, very, very simple and easy program. So in this case, Fortran doesn't allow you to do this kind of little tricks, because it's a little bit higher level than C for certain things, uh, but actually what you will see in memory is this. That's tricky when you have Fortran and C functions in the same program, you must always pay attention in what you're going, giving here and there, otherwise you could start working with the transposed uh, matrices. You must pay attention to it. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the sources and the materials I used to do it are written in the description below. And here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comments section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, links in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, consider to donate on Patreon. Again, link in the description below. See you next time. I'm Maurice Karnbrock for The Computational Chemist.